Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode. Sadly, I have very little time this weekend to do much. So I've got a, about an hour or two that gives me enough time to whip something up, put it in Camtasia Studio 8, edit it as fast as I can, convert it, and then download it to YouTube and call it a day. Alright, so what I'm going to do, do a little something special for you guys. I wish I could do something like Duna 1 Part 4, which by the way, like I said in my last video, I think it was, I've got a whole lot of stuff that I want to do with that series and I've got a bunch of ideas. Now, I was using this because I was testing out some stuff, but you, we can see that nothing is selected and Alt 12, goodbye. Now, what we're going to work on is a part of the war series. I wish I could do something fancy, like in the front, do like a little episode where the, you know, the uh, um, ships are fighting and whatnot. But unfortunately, like I said, no time. Yeah, I just need to hit the lottery. Get a little something started here. Now, this fighter, you can find it on my Facebook page. Yeah, this is going to be the Mark IV build. Because the Mark III it had a bunch of different... Yeah, I really didn't really like. Like, it was slow. It turned slow. The light fighter is not armored at all. Except for maybe a few points. But it's it relies on speed. Get in there, attack hard, and then get the heck out. So we're going to update it a little bit. And try to give it a little bit more weapons. And a little bit more maneuverability. This is all stock, by the way. There's um, I don't use any mods when it comes to parts or um, atmospheric changes or anything. Just clouds, not those clouds. Those mods are, of course, you can find them underneath the video and the links to them. Now, let's go ahead and try to do this. Uh, I am going to use the offset, rotate. I love these little things now. I didn't really like them at first. When I saw them, I was like, why, why? But now I can see that they are actually very useful. Now, if you, if you have rotate on or if you have offset on, make sure you have your angular snap off. Or else you're gonna get this effect where it kind of like clip uh, clicks click 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 when you take this off it's nice and smooth now you might be asking why am I going why am I doing this to this poor uh, to this poor cockpit well because the original cockpit itself when you try to look out the window you can click twice on the actual cockpit window and it, it allows you to see a little bit more but it's a heck of a lot easier just to tilt it downwards so you can view upwards and have almost a complete view of what you're shooting at. It's kind of nice. It's really the only way I can think of until they make like a cockpit that's very similar to this one but not so freaking huge. Let's go ahead and give this thing some control because of the simple fact that we are going to add a nice heavy engine but fuel saving when it comes to space. We're gonna go for the real strong Vernor engine with the uh, thrust of 12 instead of the thruster block of 1 because this is a light fighter it needs to move and I'm gonna put it right between these two bolts or you know these pictures of a bolt now the um, this is so that we can actually attach things on the side of the craft because of the fact that this atomic motor engine thing is in the way and you can't really attach anything to it and so we're going to get some good fuel good fuel I want some good fuel good size fuel there we go these top over the um, the top parts of their top I beams we're gonna actually place wings onto there and you're gonna be asking yourself well oh, why put wings on this is a space fighter right it's not gonna go through the atmosphere mm, yeah you're right but it's gonna add to one the cool factor and two Wings actually are a type of light armor. If it's like another I-beam rocket that slams into the side of your light fighter, there's a good chance that the I-beam rocket will be either A, deflected, which the wing, of course, will still explode, but it'll be deflected away from the craft when it does, or B, when it hits the wing, it will, it will explode the wing, but it will slow down the rocket enough to where when it bounces into the fuel tank, it's not going fast enough to do damage. Now, of course, it's light, light armor, okay? So it's not gonna protect you from a whole heck of a lot. What's gonna protect you from a whole heck of a lot is, of course, your speed. All right, now you want to, you don't want to uh, be put too far, too far forward. Blech. You wanna go ahead and try to allow the Kerbal to be able to get in and out 
without the little message popping up saying, I'm sorry, but you are obstructed. You can't get out. You are stuck forever. Now the nose is popping down just a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go ahead and, of course, take off angular snap, rotate. I'm just going to rotate that a little bit. It's going to look like the Mark III. I'm not trying to change it up a little bit. The Mark III was a pretty good design. But I'm just trying to get it to the part counts a little lower. And have it get in there, you little sucker. Yeah, it's a little bit of a dirty video. Like I said, I'm trying to do this as fast as I can because I have stuff to do. All right, so the weapon that we're going to give this light fighter is not going to be a missile. Missile is a... A weapon that can be controlled therefore it can turn left or right and hit a target uh, an I-beam rocket is simply that a rocket is a deadhead it fires and it goes forward and let's hope it hits something that's ex that's what the I-beam rockets yes we're gonna give this thing a buttload of I-beam rockets I'm gonna try to give it mm, instead of 12 we're gonna go for 14 14 I-beam rockets now you might be asking yourself, 14 I-beam rock, I, I, blah, 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 blah. 14 I-beam rockets, what, what the heck? Yes, I'm trying to keep my swearing down to a minimum. What we're going to do is we're going to make a kind of a Gatling gun design. And uh, let's see here. I've already prepared one earlier, <laughs> like a cooking show. I've prepared one earlier. However, I will build it. You know what? I will build it. That way to show you guys exactly how to do this because this is sort of technically a part of the war series all right let me just show you what's what it looks like 38 parts that's what it looks like but i'm going to show you how to build it so if you've noticed it was on docking clamps the reason why it's on docking clamps is simply because if you want to reload that's the easiest way to do it in kerbal space program there we go so we took one we hit alt we copied it we flipped it around using the w key and we connected it into the other docking clamp. No, make sure you don't go like something like this, because then you're screwed. Now you want to, ah! And uh, let's go ahead and grab our favorite part in all of KSP. Everybody knows and loves the cubic octagonal strut. Yes, this is very strutty, strutty, strutty. Hit the R key, and it'll take you to radial symmetry, which gives you like a rocket radial thing. Take off your angular snap for this one. You're gonna have to eyeball it. Yes, yeah, right. Get in there. All right. Now try to line up the little green lines. If you can see right here, it's pretty close. It might not be exact to the nanometer, but it's pretty darn close. Now we're going to take the same thing. Hit alt click and we got another cubic or strut. Go ahead, hit space bar. Make sure it's lined up. Now hold down the alt key because if you don't hold on the alt key, you're going to start attaching to everything radially. But if you hold down the alt key, which is allowing me to connect to each and each and every single one of these individually. If I took it off, yeah, I'm all over the place. This is the only thing that you mess with when it comes to symmetry mode. The reason being is because these things are gonna clip like a mother and you do not want them to separate from the actual cannon itself or else you'll have the Kraken rip your ship apart or at least try to. So now you don't wanna do this. You don't wanna hit the X key and do this. Yes, it, it's very easy to do that, but you don't wanna do it. This is why. The um, decoupler itself has a command down here for the staging. If it didn't have a command, we could do that, but it does have a command, which means that we need to tie this command in with our I-beam rocket. You could put more if you want to, but you only need two. Make sure the symmetry is on and make sure it's not on uh, radial. Make sure it's mirrored. Now we're going to do a little bit of clipping here, so I do apologize for those who frown on clipping. Okay, so it registers, very nice. All right, and since we had the angular snap on, those are dead center. That means this thing is going to fly nicely when in space. If we were going to do an atmospheric one, we'd probably grab it, hold down shift W, and point it upwards a little bit so that the nose end and the rocket's end, because you're dealing with not only atmospheric drag, but you're also dealing with the gravity of Kerbin being so close with the atmosphere drag. Yeah, I'll explain all that later, but anyway, but we need this space bar straight for space weaponry because there's no air atmospheric drag in space you don't have to worry about that neither is there gravity now remember that the way this works the first one that you put on will be the last one fired so to keep this balanced 
so that your rocket isn't all top heavy or bottom heavy or whatever the case may be. Make sure to do it in a, for those of you who own cars, you'll know what I'm talking about. When you put on lug nuts on a tire, do a crisscross pattern. It helps keep the weight balanced. So we want the first one to be the middle one because we want that to be the last one fired. Hold down alt click. And we're gonna go ahead and make the side ones right here. Fire second to the last. And we're gonna come down here, make a crisscross pattern. Do the same thing. Hold down alt click. And then we're gonna do the same thing right here. Crisscross goes back over to the other side. Alt click back over to the other side on the top crisscross and then we'll bring this and go downwards crisscross like so okay and crisscross on top like so let's go ahead down here just like I said before two rockets one decoupler new stage rockets decoupler it's very easy I mean true you're no matter what when it comes to weapons it's going to be tedious in some way but I've kind of uh, I've kind of got it down to a science I do say kind of because I'm pretty sure somebody out there has something that's way better and what's good about this is that if we were to go ahead and double this whole thing alt click and say let's attach it right here oh cool a lot of them watch what happens they should all go into their own stages voila all right, hit the space bar and let's see what happens in three, two, one. Sweet, it works. We haven't calculated atmosphere when making these, but these are perfect for space. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at them just dead on and see if they separate with any problems whatsoever. Nope, no problems whatsoever. All right, now we have our weapon of mass destruction. We have our Hellfire Cannon, Mark II. We're gonna go ahead and take this Hellfire Cannon, double it, hold down the Alt key, and click. Everything is already in its proper staging. We don't have to mess with any of it because we made the original part all staged up already. Let's go ahead and get some antennas, uh, targeting doohickey that we sort of made. <clears throat> I'll explain later. We need to go ahead and have, make a way so the fuel can actually get into our into our engine here. So we're gonna go ahead and take the fuel, the line, and put it on our reaction wheel since the reaction wheel does transfer fuel. Now we need a way for this thing to dock with the mothership see here docking 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 it would be nice if I could put on something with doors but this is a light fighter and it's meant to be cramped it's meant to be light fast and cramped so we're gonna go ahead and put it closer to the top there we go okay do the same thing with this trying to go for the cool factor it really doesn't do anything for our craft so never go into the atmosphere with this thing unless you plan on never going back into space. This is not an SSTO. This is a space fighter, plain and simple. That might not work. Ooh, that might work. Holding down shift. Ooh, wait a minute. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that works. Oh, nice. Yes, me likey. Just need some struts now, and then we need some RCS. Make sure your angular snap is off. Make sure there is no radial symmetry. Make sure it's mirror. I mean, yes, mirror. We're going to take this and actually clip the inside. Fuel tanks, on the other hand, are going to wobble. So in order to stop that wobbly, wobbliness, we're going to go ahead and grab like that. Click like that. And to help with it also for the top part, like this. All right. Now that means that our tanks are firmly connected to the wing structure or light armor structure. And the light armor structure is firmly connected all the way around the craft. 
the light fighter itself is kind of an escape pod with weapons, if you think about it. It's the only way I can really describe it. It's an escape pod with guns. The cool thing about these Vernor engines is that they do not need to be attached to the actual fuel tank themselves, liquid fuel oxygen tank. They can be anywhere on the spacecraft, even on a metal bar or I-beam, and they'll still work, which is really nice. As lined up as possible. Now let's go ahead and make sure that we have up and down capability and do the same thing a little downwards. Okay, we're going to grab this. Where is our mass ball? Okay, we're going to put it on the other side, but the equal length away. And we're actually going to try to put it on the inside of the wing to keep the bottom part as smooth as possible. Try to line them up with the wing, make it a little, make it look a little better. All right, let's make sure the other side looks the same way. Good. And we're going to do the same thing with the top. Put one right behind it. Okay. Alt click, space bar, bring it back. All right. And now we need a reverse as well as forward thrust. Now you don't have to worry about forward and reverse thrust being strong because this is pretty much for docking maneuverability only. Your forward thrust in, in a combat situation is going to be your nuclear engine. And there really is not going to be any reverse other than your nuclear engine if you turn around and burn hard to go the other way. Alright, so when we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the offset tool, take the angular snap off, and since the thrust comes out of that little circle right there, we're going to bring this upwards towards these two peaks. I don't know if you can see the two peaks. There's two peaks right there. Beautiful. All right, so we should have our reverse thrust. Oh, parachutes. Just in case of the highly unlikely event, we make an atmospheric planetary descent. I think we have everything. We have up, down, left, right, forward, backwards, engines, fuel tanks, weapons, light armor, docking capability. We just have to, we just have to see if this actually works. All right, for this I am going to use a mod for testing purposes and that is alt H hyper edit or better blah, blah blah blah. Now I I only use this for testing purposes because I find it fun to actually figure out a way to get it off of Kerbin. Like for instance, these fighters I'd put two of them on either side of a rocket and launch it from the VAB and go all the way up and into orbit and then they detach from the actual rocket themselves and go off on their merry little way to dock with their mother spacecraft. Let's try 80. Set. Alright. And hit the V key so we can hit the, the free camera which allows us to see Kerbin underneath of us. And since we're in the dark, we're going to go ahead to the graphical and hit the MEP, which changes your position. Let's get on the light side. Very nice. Close, close all. All right. Let's test this out. All right. So now we got a Kerbal inside our spacecraft. You've noticed that it, even though it's facing straight on our camera view, that the nose is actually pointed downwards, so these RCS things will act kind of differently. So let's make sure we can EVA out of here first. Okay, good. Looks like it pushes them out very quickly. Because what good is a fighter that can't get our cripple in and out? Okay, good. Now we're going to go for IVA, internal view. And since we're pointed upwards, we're actually going to take our little Kerbal there and look up. That's good. Of course, if you click on this twice, you still have that massive thing in the way. But if you click on it twice, eh, I suppose it's alright. Me personally, I want to see the a little bit of what's going on down there. So I'm going to click twice again and just point upwards a little bit. Three, two, one. Okay, so those fired on top, of course. We might have to raise these up even more. Yeah, because if you notice, yeah.
Whoops, I uh, accidentally initiated the parachutes. Get some electricity on here real quick. There we go. So if one side gets taken out, we still have the other side. And we're going to give it a light armor. Well, these are pretty small. Ooh, hey. And they line up beautifully, too. <laughs> nice. Uh, just need to figure out a way to make that top little bit disappear. Ooh, I know. We'll go ahead and rotate them back. Offset. Wheel them in. Not too much. Save and beautiful. Look at that. The good chance is it's going to bounce off, deflect, or slow down so it doesn't destroy too much. That's behind there. Sweet. This needs to be raised a little higher. And let's put it inwards. All right. Looking good. SAS on. Lots of electrical charge. RCS is now active. Let's try this. Left and right. Left. Oh, staying straight now. Right. Staying straight. Let's try a K key. Up. It's going straight. Very good. I key is going down. Nice. And then, of course, forwards. It's giving us a little bit of oomph because of the fact that the cockpit is shaped weird. And N for backwards. Okay, now if I was to go in here and click on our pro body thing, pro body control from here, there we go. So let's try the H key again, see if it gives us the same kind of thrust from the wings. Nope, because it sees us as forward now instead of the nose always pointing downwards. That might be a little too high. <laughs> Slightly a little too high, okay. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's test this out. Let's hopefully they run across these bars and into the middle here. As long as they're in the middle, that means that the targeting is good. In five, four, three, two, one. Sweet. Okay, let's try it again. Yeah, showed up in the middle. And in the middle again, very nice. In the middle again. And in the middle again. In the middle again. And in the middle again. Beautiful. Seven shots. Hey, that's pretty good. Then, of course, at this stage, I can go ahead. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and put this on an action group. So we can just decouple them to lighten the load, as it were. Turn around and floor it, baby. This might not be a good idea, actually. Might work. No, 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 no. Oh, um, control Z. Yes. All right. Now, the idea here is to have not only a bottom fixed point, but a, an upper fixed point as well. I have no idea if that's going to work. This is kind of new. All right. Now, let's go ahead and grab our lights real quick. Just in case we are fighting in the dark, which some military, military operations will probably end up doing. Oh, you know what I could have done? Well, no. We need to see the full effect of it. I already know that these work. You just gotta make sure they're pointed straight. Ha! Ah! Ah, nice. There we go. Trying to get the light just right so it points not only at the engine, but on the inward side as well. Beautiful. Alright. Hit save. So, we've got our lights, we've got our docking, weapons, RCS, power, um, somewhat of an escape system. We got the little targeting doohickeys. Oh, that's right. So yeah, the big hype. 1.0 coming out for KSP. Oh boy. Uh, save, and I think we have a target we can shoot at. So what we're going to do is, um, real quick before I talk about 1.0 for the new full release of KSP, which is kind of interesting. We're going to dock, or not dock, but uh, where is a test craft? There's a bunch of test vehicles out here. Here's the old Arrowhead Mark III floating out there. Saturn class Tylo lander. This might work. I've been working on a Jewel 5. Whoa! Um, yeah. 
You have to be careful with this hyper edit. Sometimes it gets an attitude. Let's try this again. I guess we're just going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Select a body. I think the craft is around Jewel, and the Jewel 5 craft is a challenge that I don't think I'm going to be able to, to um, accomplish in time because of time. Yeah, time. I can't wait to hit the lottery. I'll have all the time in the world if I hit the lottery. Um, what was it? 200,000? 230,000? Yeah, set. New. No craft in sight. Anyway, it's a... Uh, whoa. There it is. Okay. The challenge was to build a big giant craft and go to all the moons of uh, Jewel, land on every single one of them, and then go back to Kerbin and everybody's fun and happy. You can do anything, whereas uh, putting probes or land probes on them or leave satellites. It's all fun, 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 fun. But you got to do it in one launch. Or not one launch. You can have a whole bunch of launches into orbit to build your spacecraft. But then you have to do one mission here, done, go back. Mods can be included from what I understand, but there's very limited mods that you're allowed. It's mostly stock and no... Let's go ahead and switch to this real quick. And no part clipping. Not like obvious part clipping that's going to happen between wings and structures. That's fine. Oh, wow, this is very old, actually. <clears throat> that is fine. But, um, park clipping as in having like 20 tanks into one tank and, you know, obvious stuff. This is a very old design. It does not work. This is the one I was working on. The one that uh, actually works is on my Facebook page. And I'm going to tweak it a little bit more before I s go off into the sunset and try to do it. But supposedly it has like a heat shield, you know, even though heat shield doesn't really mean anything yet yet in point nine um, for arrow breaking around the moons and jewel this doesn't work because of course the heat shield I was using wings and of course wings generate lift so the whole thing goes flippity 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 and I tried to use this as a type of like an arrow the arrow uses its uh, little feathers in the back to try to stabilize the craft no joy there's just not enough of them to actually keep this thing stable and it looks ridiculous so I've had to actually use metal plates instead which up the part count uh, because of the fact that they're not as big as the wings are so it ups the part count but you don't have to worry about them spinning the craft out of control when you're slamming into the atmosphere slowing down okay let's see if this whoa let's see if this works are you right in front of me yes you are Oh, there's going to be some very bad things happening today. And let's do this. RCS. SAS. Power to the engine. Power is online. In 3, 2, 1. Full burn. And then I'm going to hit the X key. To kill power. Because we're going pretty fast already. I'm going to grab my other arm here and use the docking keys. And... Spacebar! Okay, I'm going to use the docking keys to try to pull up. Boom! Oh! I'm just going to look at my target meter down there. Looks like I'm headed right back to it now. Alright. 12, 13 meters, 15. It doesn't pay to fly past the target too quickly. Hit the X key. I'm going to use my docking maneuver thing now to move out of the way. And fire. Fire. Boom. Ba -ba boom. Ha <laughs> ha Oh, the hum uh, curb manatee. That doesn't sound right. Holding down the LK, L, the LK and whatever keys. Okay, we've increased speed. I'm going to drop down using the eye. And fire. Ah, good shot. Good shot. Looks like we got that thing all. Ooh. Easy now, easy now, easy now. And fire. 
Boom! Nice. Nice. And a little, I'm going to raise the nose up just a little bit. A little bit. And fire. And, ooh, ooh, wow. We hit something. All right, full power, full power. Need to burn back over there. I can't see anything. Turn on the lights. Easy now. I don't want to crash into it. Looks like we did some serious damage. I don't see this thing doing anything anytime soon. The lander is screwed. All right, I'm going to use the N key now to slow down. Come on, hit the brakes. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, it is toast. Very, very toasty. I turn on the turn off the RCS now. I mean, yeah. Oh, there goes the heat shield. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take a pot shot at it. I'm so mean. Fire. And boom. Ow. Nice. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our bounty. Let's pretend we're a pirate. Very good. Let's go ahead and get out. Oh, we used up all our guns. Haha. <laughs> all right, turn off that. Bring this back up. EVA. All right, let's see what kind of booty we have. I think you can open it exterior, exterior-wise. <laughs> yes, you can. Opening. And look out. Ooh, what do we got in here? Oh, nice. Mmm, got some satellites, got some probe landers. This should sell very nicely on the black market. <laughs> All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't mean to get my pirate self going over here. <clears throat> I am not a pirate. I'm an outlaw. There's a difference. Outlaws fight pirates. See? They just do it in a way that the local police government don't approve of and therefore they're considered outlaws eh, I don't think that's gonna fly but still well ladies and gentlemen there it is we have our light fighter awesome so the uh, one the 1.0 KSP hype that's going around right now um, new female Kerbals a mining capability to mine for fuel apparently and um, a heat um, re-atmosphere, re-entry atmosphere, the heat uh, graphics are no longer just to look pretty. They actually burn you up on the way down. I don't know how they're going to do that with heat shields and whatnot for SSTOs, but let's uh, hope that they do the fan base right by not making it incredibly hard to land anything without a specifically uh, without a specific part like a heat shield or whatnot, which would really suck that was the case. SSTOs would be out the window. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, a lot of hype going on. Um, I'm not too sure if this game is completely ready for a full release. I mean, you know, I'm not a dev, so that'd be cool if I was, but I'm not a dev, so I don't know what exactly they got into in the works. There's a lot of bugs that need, that need some attention. A lot of bugs, especially part count. Part count has always been the crippling thing for KSP. As soon as you get past five, six, eight hundred parts, up to a thousand parts, the game slows down horribly and it becomes hard to play. And a lot of designs, a lot of great designs, good designs, get into that kind of high part count. While KSP was meant to be one of those NASA like uh, games where you just leave the Earth or leave Kerbin in a small little rocket and put a probe on the Mars or whatever, it's evolved to so much something so much more powerful. It's evolved to the point where people are building huge space colonies and huge spacecraft and having big giant uh, battles in space and there's parts all over the place and you got um, space stations that are easy 500, 600 parts that are parked next to giant spacecrafts that are five, 600 parts themselves and it just, it just eats up a lot of part count very quickly. So sadly that's due because of the fact that the game itself is, from what I understand, 
there's a lot of games out there that now use different types of game engines and they also use different lines of well I'm not a I'm not a computer guru but from what I understand it is single threaded whatever that means from what I uh, from what I can pick up from that it means that it only runs on one line of code constantly whereas many of your modern up to date games run on two to three time to three lines of code all at the same time allowing them to do things a lot quicker and be able to multitask a lot better uh, the, the equivalent of trying to shove a watermelon down a garden hose basically you know KSP was meant to be something really small it was meant to be like a 2D game that you play on your iPad but it became and evolved so much better and became this 3D dimensional world with physics and everything so you know, I could see why they had the one line of code and the Unity engine and stuff like that. But when it evolved, when it evolved into something this grand of a scale, suddenly that platform, that game engine, and that way of writing code, just not enough to keep up with it. The only way you can make KSP better on that level is to, of course, get a game engine that supports real high graphics, real 3D graphics, like. For instance, Unreal, the Unreal Engine, that's pretty cool. I hear Unity is coming out with Unity 5 and 6, 7, 8, whatever. It's supposed to be better. We hope. Female Kerbals, that'll be interesting. Out of all of this, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, the good news is, is that even though they're going to put it out for full release, KSP 1.0, they're not going to stop updating it. It's going to have updates and updates and updates and fixes and fixes and fixes which is gonna be really nice that means it's not gonna just stop dead in its tracks that is the saving factor for keeping this channel a KSP oriented channel but I guess I could go on Markiplier and start playing other games if this ever gets to the point where it gets un unbearable I hope not I really hope not I really hope not all right, well, I'm going to end this video right here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and put this craft up for download at Kerbal Curse Forge. And uh, call it a day. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for your continued support. You have no idea just how much it means to me, especially when I see on my Twitter and Facebook page all your wonderful comments and suggestions for the series or the channel in general it really does help so this is veos human signing off and have a good night